Hello and welcome back to Boring Dead Gaming, where today we're going to be playing some more of The Thaumaturge. Bit of a locked room mystery this time. A book has gone missing. We were at our sister's uh, college lecture. Um, and we've said that we can we can solve the case. Let me see, we've got some people to talk to, but I'm going to chase clues first and foremost. Let's see what we can find. A broken cup. This is the bookseller. Pieces of china tremble like a heart gripped by fear. You can hear the quiet trepidation about the torn pages, the stained cover, and the cracked spine of the small miracle that Pavernus simply call a book. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Pavernus. <laughs> Sounds like, like a D&D &D circle of hell. Um, that Parvenus simply call a book. A miracle that has been stolen may, and may never be recovered, ever. Uh, trace unknown this. The display case is open and the lock is intact. The thief's feelings are reflected in the clear glass of the display case, like the carelessness of a clown and the excitement of a rope dancer before his first step into the void. Feelings sparkle with light-heartedness and a conscience as clean as freshly laundered linens. After all, everything is just an innocent prank. Okay, so it could be a prank as opposed to like an actual theft theft. Was there something over here? No. Come on. Yeah, I don't think there's anything in here. We can't go in there. Uh, something in here, maybe? Lockpick in a flower box. This is the thief. The lockpick is covered with blots of feverish thoughts, sloppy as a child's handwriting. There was no time. Someone could see, point the finger, catch him in the act, catch the thief. The flower pot was close and seemed a reasonable solution. Almost. Him. We're looking for a male then. Who's this dude? I think that's about all we're getting, so um, let's talk to our sister first. What's up, Sherlock? Mystery solved? You're as happy as a child on Christmas Day. <laughs> I like to watch you do something with passion. Who do you <clears throat> think could have taken the book? I have no idea, but I'm sure you'll be fine. You're way too enthusiastic. How many sweets have you had? Don't even ask. <laughs> so you're on first name terms with someone, huh? How did that happen? Everyone's on first name terms with everyone else here. Somehow, I haven't noticed him giving any other student that much attention. <laughs> Watch it. You're going to get it. I'll be off now. Okay, well, we can't speak to anyone else in here, so let's, there were a couple of people in the front room we could speak to. Uh, student guard. Let's speak with Paulina first. And we're looking for a guy. I expect the only one I, th I can yes. speak to is the bookseller or Dickstein. Uh, yeah. Who do you think is behind stealing that book? I can't believe that it might be one of us. After all, we all love books. That sounds like the perfect motive. <laughs> Indeed. If I were to steal, I would rob antiquarian bookshops. But it wasn't me. I'll be off now. Um, let's talk to Dijkstein, I suppose. Can I help you? Do you have any suspicions regarding the stolen volume? I don't believe any of the students could do it. It must be a misunderstanding. I hope you manage to get to the bottom of it. Tell me about Ligia's studies. Your sister has an extraordinary mind. She's one of our most gifted graduates, and I hope she will join our teaching staff after this lecture. Her arguments are bold and accurate, untainted by social restraints. Oh, and her charisma. Indeed, you are impressed. <clears throat> Is there anything else you want to ask? Thank you. Goodbye. Uh, yeah, I'll speak to Studentka, I suppose. You don't understand. I want to leave. And I want my volume to be in my display case. Maybe you're the one who has it. I'm not a thief, and I don't have to explain myself. There's no need to argue. Please, let me help you. 
You can help by searching this young lady. I know subtler ways. Could you give me a personal item, please? No, she's not the one who stole the book. The trace doesn't match. How do you know? Argument at the door. The student didn't steal the volume. The trace on her powder box is velvety and tastes of iron, as if an unbreakable character was hidden beneath the delicate beauty, completely incompatible with the one who imprinted on the lockpick. There's no trace of the thief on this item. That lady did not steal the book. I see. I can't open the door. But I can help you with your parents. I know what it's like when your loved ones don't understand your passion for books. I see. Thank you for your help. Mr. Shulsky, there are guest codes ah. in the wardrobe. I will let you in there if it helps you to catch that degenerate. That might be helpful. Then follow me, please. Let me in the coats. Aha! Let's see what we got here. Large woman's coat. Uh, probably belongs to Lucre Lucrecia. The fibres of the coat spin and weave into an intricate embroidery of sorrow and bitterness. The accusation of an affair weighs down the fabric and creates deep wrinkles on its surface. The explanation disappears like a soap bubble. She cannot confess. The university must remain a secret. Men's coat, Dowdian worn. The coat's pocket is full of worries pushed away out of thought's reach. They're grey and dull, like the lockpick found in the flower pot. They whisper of punishment that will befall the son for taking his father's locksmithing tools, about the consequences of a prank that will turn into trouble. Elegant women's coat, uh, trace unknown. An elegant coat boasts above others, like a flower among the weeds. It radiates red pride spreads the scent of splendor, and tempts with the taste of sweetness. Only a small thread at the collar trembles with uncertainty. Will the effort be noticed by the one for whom it was made? Okay, let's talk to the guy. And? Have you found anything? Maybe, although I still need some information. Well, what are you waiting for? Fire away! I found a men's coat in the wardrobe, one with embroidered initials and wooden buttons. Do you remember who it belongs to? With a worn-out collar and elbow patches? That's Valdemar's coat. You have good memory. Which you are using in a ridiculous way. Why don't you look for the degenerate? The large coat belongs to Miss Lucrezia, I presume. The one with the satin lining? <laughs> yeah, no doubt. But I don't know why you're wasting your time on this. Thank you. That was very helpful. Voldemort. I will wait for the results, then. Alrighty. I reckon he's got to be up there. The antiquarian is convinced that the worn coat belongs to Voldemar. It's time to expose the thief. It was Voldemar who stole the volume. He had no trouble opening the display case, being the son of a locksmith. He knows his way around locks. However, it seems that his intentions weren't entirely bad. He thought the theft would be an innocent prank, but it ended up causing quite a commotion. Where are you, Aldemar? There you are. A grey coat with embroidered initials and wooden buttons. It belongs to you, doesn't it? Why do you ask? I think it belongs to the thief. What? No, I don't wear a coat. It's September. I like the cold, and that is not a crime. L leave me alone. Yeah, we're gonna find something a little more incriminating, huh? Voldemort claims he's not the thief, however, the, the evidence leaves no doubt. I'm sure if I play it right, Voldemort's thoughts will reveal his sins. Okay, let's uh, see what we can find. Maybe something in here? Here, yeah, I found your book. And what's this? Okay. 
Voldemar hid the volume under the bed in the antiquarian's bedroom. The hiding spot leaves much to be desired. The volume is covered by a thin layer of gloomy thoughts that bind its covers like grey hoarfrost. It is the thief's trace, identical to the one on the coat in the lockpicks. There is no doubt, Voldemar is the thief. Uh, let's read the letter. I hope you will find my little plot amusing. The city must recognize the power of thaumaturgy. Enjoy your show. You have earned it. Cecilia. Hm. I should return the volume. The bookseller will finally calm down. And then I will have a talk with the author. So she got the guy to do it as letter. a prank. To test us. Interesting. Uh, a carefully calli calligraphed letter addressed to me from Cecilia. A thought wanders across the note, playful as a young woman on a summer's eve. She considers all the scenarios, makes plans and selects tools, all to make the right impression on him. I found the volume. A letter fell out from it written by Cecilia. The intrigue was planned and I don't like to be a tool of other people's games. I should talk to her. Yay. Uh, yeah, we'll return the volume first so everyone can leave. Here is your volume. You came back to me, safe and sound. Praise the Lord. I hope it was all just a mistake. No, it was planned. That was obvious. How did you find the book? I found the lockpicks that the thief used to open the display case. They were marked with this trace. And that is how you determined his identity? What an exceptional display of thaumaturgy. As impressive as conjuring up ghosts at a seance. I would like to see you say that to Madame Samira. Of course you know each other. You both prey on people's gullibility. <laughs> Consider this a thaumaturgical display. Before you left the house, you had an argument with your husband. He thinks you are having an affair, while in reality, you sneak out to the university. Do you find that convincing? How dare you? These are private matters and should not be discussed in public. Duh, you ask for it. Stop, both of you. Please tell us who took the book from the display case. The book was in the bedroom, under the bed. What a captivating display of power. Shame there wasn't a missing sock there too. Now that would be a discovery. Don't be sarcastic, it's the potential that matters. What matters is who is responsible for that mess. Please, don't keep us in suspense. The plot might not be too original, but it was certainly planned. You might be missing the big picture. The one responsible for stealing the book is Valdemar. He used his father's lockpicks and hid the book under the bed. Valdemar? How could you? What a disappointment. The boy stole the book at Cecilia's request. She talked him into it. It's impossible. Valdemar? It's true, Mr. President. Cecilia said it would be a joke. Do you understand what kind of situation this puts me in? How this affects our reputation? I'm sorry, but it was necessary. I had my reasons. An exquisite coat, an evening dress, an intrigue. You took a lot of trouble to impress me. Did it work? Yes. Then it was worth it. That's enough. Mr. Cilia, please explain yourself. Nobody treats taumaturgy like a real science. I had to show its potential. Show what you are capable of. That's enough. That is no excuse. I will talk to you in a minute. Leave us alone. You know I was right. I'm sorry you were used like that. I've had a great time. If all the lectures are like this, I want to be a student. 
Oh, I know what you mean. Cecilia's methods are disgraceful, but she does have a point. Our lecture by a taumaturge would enrich our academy. Please consider it an offer. I will think about it. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. Uh, that seems to be the quest over, though, so I guess we leave. I guess none of these people want to talk to me right now. Okay, let's have a little look at what we're doing. Kind of working down the side quests at the moment. Um, I think I've done about as much as I can with that at the moment. There's new maps to go to, obviously. Praga... Uh, is there any, so we're, what map are we in? We're in, uh, is it, we're still in Northern Sremisia? Yes, we are. So are there other side things we can do here? Uh, no, no, yes. Afternoon. No. Afternoon. Uh, drop in for dinner. Does that, does it count as dinner? It is night. Might do. Let's check it out. I don't think it's just leading me to a bench to rest. Wait. I'm guessing we're going somewhere. Aha! They say that with music, we can express what we are unable to say with words. Sadly, all I could express was my lack of talent. Still, it felt nice to play even a simple waltz on Liszt's piano. Franz Liszt. I think he was the guy that used to put his hands in special clamps to extend the gap between his fingers so he could play a, a wider array of keys. Uh, he ended up um, damaging his hands so he was unable to play, I think. Right, anyway, so where, where are we? Time of day. We are early morning. Uh, we've got to wait to the afternoon anyway. Uh, afternoon. So we've we got two afternoon ones. That kind of means we've got to spend two days waiting around to do stuff, but I think there's a bench here. So let's do that. What a day. Let's wait until... So, let's kill some time. Oh, this way. Le Plume. I forget what we're doing. Discussion about art. Okay, fair enough. Ah, <laughs> yeah. oh, who's this? Is this the one? No. Uh, we could talk to her anyway. I don't know who this is. Please sit down and smile at me. We're dear friends after all. Is she the... Oh, I don't quite follow... Is she the revolutionary from the station? You really don't know who I am? You're so innocent. Take a look at me. Preferably my eyes. Uh, I think she's the one from the station, yeah? Yes, I've seen you in a poster for... Oh. An operetta? Olena Oh, maybe not. <laughs> maybe it's just a simpler character model. Viktor Miłożomb Szulski. Well, well. How do you find Rumianceva Suarez? Olena, my beauty. Someone would like to meet you. Please, let's go. I already have company. Go away. This isn't the theater, honey. No need to make a scene. Move it. Then we're gonna have a fight. Stand up for her. The lady said she didn't want to. Is it a problem? Two. An unreliable, wealthy <gasps> bitch and a Ooh. fool trying to be a hero. I think he's gonna War. get punched. Get lost. Unless you want to solve it another way. I'll yeah. make it clear for you. Ah, so he's this guy. Pushy admirer. Man. Okay, uh, Lelak Bukovac. Um, okay, well, we're going to start the fight. We've got Morana now, I think. we got Morana now? Yeah, we do. I wasn't sure if I'd been able to level up. 
Uh, suggested for mind. Ah, oh, Lelic or Morana, there we go. So, uh, inflicts damage equal to eight times the enemy's missing focus. Okay, he's not missing focus currently. Reduces focus, interrupts a planned action, pretty nice. Although that is happening after his action. Uh, reduces focus. I mean, she could do this, but it's not going to really do any damage is the thing. So maybe we'll go in with Lelek to do a quick annoyance. And... I guess I'll do one as well. Did, did, did I do my? I did do mine as well. Okay. So I could do that to get rid of his focus, and then maybe we could follow up with the Marana, and she could do this one. That's going to be uh, thirty-two damage then on him. So that's a pretty big hit. Yikes. Okay, well he's down to four, so I suggest we just do a quick punch, and on this guy we've got Bukovac. Over here. Uh, I think maybe we'll try and put some suffering on. Okay, he's got suffering on. We could... Yeah, that's a, that's a nice big punch on him. And then why don't we finish up with... Do a gin. Can he just do damage? He's more, yeah, he's more about casting states that, that take a little while to occur. Uh, we can maybe do a Velez. Just a little venomous smile. Or... 2 to 6, 15. That's still happening before his go, so I think we'll do that. I've only got one. Uh, tell you what, yeah. Have another shot. <laughs> Be rude to a lady, will you? Thank you for standing up for me. Not everyone would dare to do that. I hope they didn't hurt you too much. Why did he pursue you like that? Does it happen often? Fame doesn't just come with splendor and acclaim. It also comes with unwanted attention. Some people think I belong to them because the entire town can watch me. Goodbye. Or perhaps see you later, dear Mr. Shulsky. Cool. Okay, that's not where we were going, though. Uh, La Plume. Is this La Plume? I guess it is. Ah, here we go. What is art? The master of souls liberating them from the shackles of flesh. A portal between a person and the absolute. Now, what is night now? So we're going to have to wait again to afternoon. There's a bench there. Uh, is it the botanicals one? I think it is in the afternoon. Yeah. So let's uh, let's do a little wait around for this. Let's wait. Let's wait until Victor Shulsky so doesn't sleep. Let's kill he just waits. Some time. <laughs> Down here? Ah, I guess it's here. The orchid's colours and the smell of other exotic plants brought in by Natechki. A piece of a tropical paradise in the gloomy, dreary Warsaw. Okay, I think we're done with the Northern Thrymishia things. We've got some Mirov, Pavishla, Mirov... Praga, the Rizitsky Bazaar, which was Mirov, I think. Uh, I think we... This is a side quest, but it's going to be a bit more involved. Okay, I think maybe we'll go to... Uh, Vishla. 
we'll do this one. We're going to tick off some of this stuff. I want to clear out the journal a little bit. And then maybe we'll end up with that um, in Mirov. Was it Praga? I can't remember. But wherever that Rasputin thing was. I'm going to go and deal with the troublesome kids rolling hoops and shouting in Pavishla. It's probably a worthwhile use of our time. <laughs> Not sure what time of day we go. Unfortunately, sometimes it gives you a clue or just tells you what time of day to go, but sometimes it does not. I mean, they could be doing this at any time of day, really. Gang, Wednesday at five. Well, well. Message scrawled in chalk. A group meeting is on Wednesday at five o'clock. In the courtyard of the tenement house at 5A Bravana Street, almost every afternoon, a group of boys play hoop rolling to the despair of the tenants of nearby apartments. It seems that the boys are having fun and are eager to let new players join in. So afternoon again. So I will go to a nearby bench. Kill some time to the afternoon. Go back. Aren't your legs getting sore? Stupid question. Let's wait until. So let's kill some time. Right. Let's catch up with those kids. Making a nuisance of themselves. Here are they. I could write that rolling a wheel arduously on cobblestones is a perfect metaphor for life. Instead, I'll just admit that I had a lot of fun. Those little scamps. <laughs> okay. Right. I think we're going to go to Mirov now, but what are we going to kind of look to do there? Yeah. So I think we'll start with that, and I believe that's in Mirov, although it doesn't say so. I feel like the um, the experience thing has slowed down a bit. Maybe the maybe we need more experience to level things up now. Uh, oh, no, Rizitsky Bazaar's over there. Oh, okay, it's actually its own place. So it's a different bazaar to Mirov. Uh, I am going to go to Mirov, though, because there's stuff to do there. Rizitsky Bazaar, new map, then. Um, probably quite a lot to do. Over there. Um, that's Praga. This is Praga. Mirov. Uh, oh, we're looking for more info, I think, on this. And, and that one as well. So we're we'll running around chasing clues a little bit first. New type of telescope, Pluto. You can rent it for a small fee and watch the wonders of the night sky. Am I a magician or what? Mordecai Eisenbaum has constructed a new type of telescope which can be tested for a small fee. The perfect opportunity is tonight, as a comet will appear in the sky. So the inventor invites anyone willing to come to his apartment. Sounds good, it's night time now. Let's go straight there. Oh, Upir wants to talk to us. Um, and we will do that. We will follow the Upir thing. Um, so we'll spend a little bit of time in Mirov then. Mirror of mirror of on the wall. Uh, I think I've done. I think I've done the points of interest. I'm not quite sure where this is leading us. Oh, what's this? Jan Novatsky, chairman of the Bridge Lovers Am Club. Am I a magician or what? This is probably the clue for that one. In the apartment, just go there in the evening. Okay, fine. Um, 
We'll go here first. Thanks to Eisenbaum's invention, the comet was at arm's length. I wonder if it was a harbinger of good fortune or an imminent disaster. Probably the latter. <laughs> Um, so, I imagine the bridge is an evening thing, right? Probably. Praga, Rosichki Bazaar. Up here we know is around here. Uh, if this is just going to guide me to a bench to wait, it didn't seem to be, so maybe we can go do this now. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Aha! Gambler's Den. Lovely. Oh, hello. A bit more involved, this one. That's cool. What's this? GHS Regulations. Dear friends, having fun is a serious business, so before you grab the cards, please be so kind as to make yourself familiar with the game health and safety regulations. Better yet, learn them by heart of your own volition, or else someone will hammer them home. Don't be a sore loser. If you lose, get up and leave rather than grab a shiv and start a brawl. Whoever cannot grasp it will be adjusted to social life by force. Bet with your own money or someone else's. We don't care. Better, better, you, but you better have it or we'll stop being nice. Wash your hands for goodness sakes. The cards are our common property. They don't need to be made filthy with whatever greasy fare you've been eating. If you must talk about this place, at least talk to people who have, no, have money and are discreet. No one wants a police raid. Yours faithfully and so on. Cards on the table. What is tournament scores? Uh, looks like Polina. Polina. I wonder if it's the Polina we've met. Probably. She seems to be a bit of a card shark on the sly. Unlucky at cards. Unlucky in love, or something like that. There we go. Had a little gamble. I guess it was marginally more involved. Is Polina here? Eh. It's nice we had a location to go into anyway. Some of them, as we've seen, are just, you know, you click on the front door and that's it. Right, that done anyway. Uh, let's do up here, because he's hanging around this map. What here do you is. want to tell me, friend? Oop, now that's closing in. Promising. And the teacher said, Victor, is the right here in the classroom with us right now? <laughs> I almost pissed myself. Could be a problem, that. Ooh, it doesn't want us to go that way. Victor, promise me that the whispers of these salutors of yours won't turn you into a cynic like your father. I promise, Mother. I'd rather not change at all, much less into Father. I wonder if he'll find a new appreciation for his father in following the, the main story of this. It seems like he was more than Victor believed him You'll to be. see! My upper... Oh. I want to see your upper. What? Come back. Carrying it with me for half a lifetime. I remember there was someone else here. He wasn't happy. He thought I wasn't ready yet. Miss, maybe he was right. Maybe. 
Oop, stop to our knees in mud. No, we're okay now. Uh, I presume he's going to take us to a different map. And that's okay. I might go to Praga next and uh, get a couple of things that are there in our journal. Yeah, so what map does Upir want us to go to next? Rizitschki Bazaar. Okay, we're going to go to Port Praga though. Right, let's have a look. So we've got a couple of things here. There's uh, this one. Oh yeah, that's probably a main one. Uh, so let's quickly do this one. I think it's the same church though, to be fair. Uh, but we'll do the viewpoint first, I suppose. What? I thought it was in Praga. Oh, <laughs> okay, no, that Praga, not Port Praga. Fair enough, all right. Uh, well, it's a new map uh, that we haven't been to yet, so let's do that. I guess that's on me, that one. What we got here? Listen to the accordion. I'd rather not, but for sure. Brute force is pushing the windbag as clumsy fingers slip off the keys, yet there is an odd charm to the lack of finesse that seems to harmonise with the nostalgic side of Warsaw. So we'll look at the map. What we got? Go oh, it's quite a small map, actually. We've got a point of interest there. There's the Orthodox Church and a hospital. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll have a look around. Oop. Where do you think you're going, know it all? Oh, we're running a business here. It's you. What do you know? Please, please help me. I only ask these kind gentlemen for directions. To Albuquerque, is that right? Oh, where's that guy? Are you done? Look at them goddamn bigwigs. You're not gonna make fools out of us, you clown. There is no such thing as Albuquerque. Albuquerque! Shut your mouth. We can forget the whole thing if you drop your wallet. You can chip in too since you popped up. They can try. But I, I don't think so. Come on, I'll sort you out. This one's lost it. He's asking for it. Are you sure? One against three? Well, it's more like... Uh, how many have we got now? Yeah, it's more like seven against three. I'll be fine. Shut the fuck up, you're putting me to sleep. Get him, boys. Okay, low focus here. Uh, Lalako Marana, Bukovac, Upirujin. Uh, this guy with the low focus is probably quite a good one to start with. So let's do that. And I'm going to go on with Lelek, I think, initially. Because Marana's ones aren't quite as quick. Well, no, actually, uh, maybe we will do this. So not, the, not that one, obviously, because he hasn't got any missing focus yet. That could be a good attack on this guy. Uh, but this one, interrupt his action or slow his action. I think either way... Uh, what's the difference? I don't know what the difference is, but we'll do that. Um, he is reduced damage, reduced damage... So I think on this guy, because he's a, especially because he's a Book of Atch guy, I might start the suffering on him. <laughs> They're being cheered on by the guy on his suitcase over here. Okay, so we still get another action before her. I think we stick. I think we stick more suffering on this guy, to be honest. And then we can uh, do a bigger attack on the focus guy. He's got 39, so we're going to go in with uh, our big attack. We're looking for at least 15 now. Uh, Marana's looking pretty good to bet for that actually and slows all enemies planned actions so that's quite nice Big buff Ooh. You're going to shatter? Oh not quite I think he might yeah. <laughs> He's knocked out Nice Okay well he's taking quite a lot of suffering I think we may as well put the, uh, the Book of Arch attack on him uh, which will get even more of that going. We could even um, the lower the health points, the faster the speed. Uh, so that will that will work. That'll kill him. And on this guy, I'm going to start on the uh, focus thing, I think, and then we'll get Mar Marana to do a big finish on him. How 
It's the first damage we've taken. Uh, okay, he's got two left. So I'm going to get rid of that. And then we're going to get Morana to come in and do her attack. And that's... Oh, he's only got 16 left. How did he take damage already? Can't remember. But anyway, this is going to be a kill. Forty-eight damage. Whoa, that's a big finisher. That's a really nice combo, though. Actually, this was the best combat I've seen so <laughs> far. They didn't fight like that in the Albuquerque Saloon. Any time. Thank you again for your help, Walter Pinkman. Pinkman. Viktor Shulski. I don't want to worry you, but Warsaw is not on the way to Albuquerque. It depends on how you look at it. If it wasn't for you, my journey would have ended here. Thank you again, Mr. Shulsky. Okay, Walter Pingman. Obvious Breaking Bad reference. I'm just not sure why. <laughs> um, Albuquerque, Walter White, Jesse Pinkman. Big Breaking Bad reference. What, what is he selling? Is he selling meth? He might be. Maybe it's blue meth. What we got here? Uh, I don't know what that is. Um, anything up here? No. There is something up there, though. Maybe a couple of somethings. So there is the uh, other viewpoint here. Let's start with that. So that's that one. I think. Where is that? That's oh, that's Rizitski Bazaar. Okay. okay. Uh, well, we'll do this one. Um, because he wants... Although, is there anything here that could be Taylor Inspiration? Um, maybe. I just want to have a look up here first. What we got? Sketching charcoal. With a sweeping motion, the hand sketches the shape, transforming the blackness of coal into the blackness that nestles in the depths of the heart. This will not be a cheerful drawing. It's an abyss, an expression of the immeasurable desert of despair. Bleak. I really do appreciate the sort of Eastern European bleakness of outlook at times. <laughs> don't know why, it just kind of appeals to me. Uh, I'm looking for... He might just be taking us to the tram stop, uh, in which case we'll go back to the church. Yeah, okay. Ooh, it's down here. Map of the Bavarian Alps. A head full of plans for the next hike. Which trails are a must and which can be skipped. There isn't enough time for everything. As long as you get to see the chamois. That's how I would pronounce that. Or I guess you might say chamois. But in uh, England, you see things that you buff cars with after you've washed them and they're called chamois leathers and that's how you spell chamois. Um, but yeah. Uh, but chamois I think might be like a type of like mountain goat or something. I'm not sure. Perhaps you might even manage to take their photograph. Who's this guy? People of Praga, ladies and gentlemen, you cannot do that. You're not going to tell us what we can and cannot do, Russian minion. This is our home. We won't have you bring Satan into our homes. What's the reason for this commotion? Have you been living under a rock? People's souls are at stake here. You bet. Ladies and gentlemen, the Praga district must <laughs> and will get access to a modern sewer system. <laughs> we don't system. want indoor toilets. Everybody here knows this is nothing more than a Jewish plot to control upright citizens. Freemasonry. Everybody knows that. Uh, indoor toilets are a good thing, guys. Good people. Progress is inevitable. Whether you want it or not. Warsaw cannot stay the continent's backwater forever. Your kind has always tried to delude us. How about we check your foreskin? I beg your pardon? You hold our ground, the chosen people. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> it's worth fighting over. Uh, Bukovac, Upirojin, Lalako Morana. Um, yeah, I might start with this guy, because then we can probably do some decent damage with Morana's finisher. 
So why don't we start with maybe a Lulek, because he can get the couple off really quickly. Uh, don't have any negative states. We m oh, wow. What's it? Who's doing all that damage to us? 10. 11 to 10. 9 to 11, I mean. Wow. Okay. Uh, well, interrupting an action might be a good, good one. Uh, I can put some suffering on him. Uh, I'm going to do that again. Yeah, Lelic's going to take two off. I'm going to queue up Marana. Her finisher. Can I... Uh, I can't quite get the other one off before then. So she's going to do 24 damage. Maybe... Ooh, that's quite a long attack. Uh, oh, I didn't get the didn't get the suffering on before, so that was going to be wasted to go. It's got some suffering on now. Ow. Probably going to need a Vela's heal fairly soon. Didn't interrupt that guy. God, I'm dead next go if we can't do something about this. So let's get Velez out. Hopefully for a crit heal. That'd be rather lovely. Um, not going to finish him off. Uh, but between the two of us it might. Maybe I'll do one after he's attacked. and Maybe we can kill this guy. Crit please. Yeah. Crit heal. Everything's back to normal. Take that. I love Velas. The, the crit heal he pulls off is just amazing. Uh, that's reduced damage by 80%, so I don't want to do that on him. I could probably do this on him, though. Uh, yeah, that's pretty good. And then we want to get Book of Archin to get rid of his trait. Okay, so I'm doing a reasonable attack on him. He's got some suffering on. I think... Uh, who might do a nice attack on him? Yeah, I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to transfer Lelek's thing to him. Oh, the thing, to, the condition to him with Lelek. Uh, transfer negative states. What's his thing? He's reducing damage. Uh, it needs to up or gin attack. Mm -mm. I'll transfer it anyway. This guy uh, should be able to get the kill. Now, I did get rid of that state on me, but I don't think it transferred it to him because he's immune to negative states at the moment. Yeah. Uh, but up or gin. Um, Sounds fair enough. Maybe I'll do an appear heal attack. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, actually no. That's going to go after appear. So I think that's pretty good. So what have we got? Six left. Quick punch. I think. Might get lucky. Who else is a pretty quick attack? Bukovach is pretty quick. He doesn't do direct damage though. Maybe Morana's is quite quick. Yeah. So if I had to get a 5 instead of the 6, which I do, Morana should be able to just finish him off. There we go. Nice! I think we've got a nice uh, mix of abilities might be unorthodox, But it's the effect that counts, right? Thank you. It's nothing, really. Okay, where are we going? Oh, was it... It was taking us to the tram stop, wasn't it? Okay, so... Uh, I probably want to do the Rasputin thing. Up here was Rizitsky Bazaar, wasn't he? Um, I just want to pop up here. I think there was another viewpoint. It might be this one. Oh, there was one down there. Uh, okay. It was uh, a... Bit of stuff up here as well. There might be something to find. There was not. 
But I want to go back and do the other viewpoint thing. Or point of, point of interest, really, is what I should say. Whoop. Down here is probably another one of those camera-type things. Actually, it's the opposite of a camera, isn't it? Something that displays a photo, not something that takes one. Victims... Okay, we'll get to that in a sec. I think there's uh, something down here, though. Oop. Looks like... Uh, a ho oh, it is a hospital, isn't it? I remember now. It's not, it was on the map. Okay, well, we know where that is. That's the Gossini Bazaar. We've been there. What's going on here? Hello, sweet secret. Hello. The Golden Verses by Pythagoras. He repeats the words in his head, but weariness takes over. Golden thoughts for his golden princess. Well, I'll be. This is cheap. The cover isn't made of gold, nor are the letters gilded. Instead of books, he would rather buy her a necklace made of actual gold. Black and gold, gravity and boldness, class and wealth. A real man wears black these days, and he doesn't shy away from refined golden ornaments. Add to that the fur of wild yet delicate animals to emphasize his resolve and sophisticated subtlety. Oh, okay. I can't get around that way. That's okay. Let's see what's going on at the hospital. We can go in, and we might do, but let's uh, let's see what's happening here first. Hey, you with the book! Tell them they can't keep us here against our will. Go back to the ward. I'm telling you for the last time. The examination's not over. Man, this is a prison state. Even quacks will lock you up. You better stay out of this. Take it from me. Is it all because patients won't get examined anymore? My friend felt under the weather, so we came. But look at him now. Sound as a bell. You came. They brought you on a cart, half dead. Probably after some kind of subversion. This is slander! It's better if they stay longer. For examination. You understand? I'm not sure I trust the doctors, honestly. It's better if they stay longer. Yeah, back off, These dude. These gentlemen had a moment of weakness, but I can see they're better now. Let them leave. Did you hear the man? We'll go then. What kind of underground solidarity is that? We'll put you all in solitary. Yeah, I don't think they were on the up and up, these doctors. Medic's helper. Uh, okay, what do we got? So we got Velez. Assassin vulnerability. Okay, yeah. Uh, Upiro Jin. Uh, Lalak Omorana. So we can finish this guy off pretty quickly by the look of it. So we'll attack with... Uh, does Jin have a focus attack? I can't remember. Not really. Uh, but Upia does. So yeah, we'll take that off. I'll do one as well, and then we'll get a finisher of some description on him. So 29 health. I can do a decent amount of that. And Marana can finish off with, say, 16. Or we'll slow every or slow everyone's actions. That seems like a better idea. I love this finisher. Freezing them solid and they just go bonk. <laughs> That's great. Okay, uh, so they're done. These guys are slowed. Uh, this is Velez. Uh, negative states, negative states. I think Morana will get a nice finisher on this guy, so let's uh, let's get Velez to attack first. This guy. I don't really need the healing, so what else can he do? 50% uh, chance of tripling the damage. That's probably not a bad shout. Let's try that. Uh, meanwhile, I probably want, if we're doing a, doing a Morana one, we probably want to get his focus down anyway. If. If. Okay, so he's going to go. We can 
Uh, yeah, if I continue to get his focus down, then Morana's gonna go and just completely... Ah, oh, it was only at 15. But I think Morana's attack will kill him now, because uh, he's only got 15 health. Yeah. This is great. I love having this, because uh, this, it's quick as well. It's gonna do 32 damage. And we'll flip our attentions to this guy. Um, and I don't think we even need to, to do that particularly. Because uh, the focus thing doesn't count as a condition. Blam. Did we take four focus off him? We did. Uh, well, we'll take the lo might as well take the last one. And then Morana is going to do 32 damage. He's got 31 health, so... I think she's actually going to do more like 40 damage, because we just took another focus off. Blam. That is... That is deadly, that is. We need more such companions in our ship. Thanks. Where did you get savage like that? Why are you so curious? Give him a break. We owe him that much. We were outnumbered by the Ruskies. That's all you need to know. Let's go before you tell him the story of your life. I wonder if we should even go in the hospital now. I mean, uh, yeah, there might be stuff to do in there. It's quite big. As in, I mean, obviously it's a big hospital, it's going to be big, but like, there's a lot of areas we can go in, kind of, what I mean. Uh, not a lot of people to speak to or stuff to discover thus far, though. Looks like it's downstairs. Can we go upstairs and downstairs? No. No. Sideway? Wow, this is a big place. Oh, there's got to be, there's got to be some sort of quests related to this place. This is huge. The biggest location so far. Nothing to do here, but I, I'd imagine we're going to be back here at some point on some kind of quest. Side or otherwise. Do you mind me? I just like to walk around clicking my fingers in places. I'm just a hep cat. Right, anyway, let's go and look in this Orthodox Church thing and see what see what Rasputin's up to. What is this? Pick up. Ah, fashion review. Nice. I get some more some more th new threads. Always appreciated. Okay, it's not me to go this way, but I think the church is just in there. <laughs> Quick around these grounds. I think I've been over there before, but let's go in. Prayer book, Trace Unknown. The pages of the prayer book are read from often, although the words written on them have already engraved themselves in memory. The same prayers are used for various cases of alleged possession. Hmm. We could sit, but let's uh, let's keep looking around for t now. Do you mind me, Father? Candelabrum. These candles aren't burning. The candelabrum must be ritualistic, lit only on special occasions. Incense. Trace familiar. Clergyman. Words repeated continuously like a mantra, regularly, often, and with great excitement still hover over the incense smoke. Attempts to chase away Satan, cries to heaven beseeching divine inspiration, sorry, divine intervention for souls possessed by, possessed by various evil spirits. Oh, that's a mouthful. Exorcisms are held regularly in the sacred space, conducted by Father Kirill. The clergyman follows his learned routine and does not take particular care to identify cases or actually help tormented souls. Hmm. Lectern. Trace familiar. Sarina. Hmm. Echoes of a whisper remained atop the lectern, the confession that Kirill had heard. 
A confession or a silent cry for help, a desperate plea for hope. Icon, Trace Certain, Rasputin. An icon with the countenance of Tsar Nikolai II. He looked at the icon for a long time, straight into the Tsar's eyes as if interrogating him, perhaps looking for inspiration. He stepped away from it with a plan formed in his head, though the icon hadn't answered. Chair, this is Sarina Alexandra. Her heart was pounding in trepidation as she sat in the chair. Words of the prayer brought no solace, nor did Christ looking calmly down at her from the icon. The fear for the entity closest to, to her in life overshadowed everything else. The Sarina visits the Orthodox Church, most likely incognito, seeing as no one is talking about it. Her confessor is Kirill, from whom she seeks help from her, for her troubled heart. Her thoughts are full of fear. And justifiably so, because the revolution is not that far away. Uh, we could sit in the chair. I haven't seen you here before, young man. You look exhausted. What brings you here? I must have gotten lost. I don't know yet where my path is taking me. Are you a believer? Be warned, I'm not religious. And yet your feet brought you here. I sense you have doubts, questions, so ask. Yeah, uh, let's, okay, let's do this one first. What is the church's position on thaumaturgy? That's a fairly difficult subject. There is hope for all even for those who live in great sin. So, in your opinion, Father, being a thaumaturge is a sin? It's not up to me to say what's a sin and what isn't, but there's hope for everyone, young man. All right, we'll work down the list. You're an exorcist, aren't you? I've heard you regularly drive Satan out of people here. Yes, it's true. Does it often work? If the flame of Doubting Thomas flickers inside you, you can soon witness the miracle of exorcism with your own eyes. Is there anything else I can help you with? Do you really believe that nonsense, Father? That demons dwell inside people? Is that calculation or habit? I think we aren't so different from one another. I don't question the existence of your demons, Thaumaturge. I had to ask. Is there still something troubling you? You get some peculiar guests here, Father. There is room in God's house for everyone. It's no secret that Sarina Alexandra is particularly God-fearing. Do you know her well? As well as a confessor can. So, quite well. If you're looking for gossip about Her Imperial Majesty, you've come to the wrong place. There are plenty of people at Rozhitsky Bazaar eager for such chit-chat. Unless I can help you with something else. Do you know Grigory Rasputin, father? He also visited this place not long ago. Rasputin. I haven't seen him here, but yes, I know him. And I remember him well. It's impossible to forget someone like that. How do you know one another? From back in Petersburg, he was looking for protection, posing as a great preacher, but I was suspicious of him. He was nothing more than an ordinary charlatan. Just talking about that man sullies the palate with sin. Why do you ask about him? No reason. During a conversation, Kirill revealed that he'd met Rasputin in Petersburg. He doesn't think very highly of him. In fact, he demonstrates hostility toward the man. Rasputin tried to ingratiate himself with the local clergy, but he didn't succeed. Rasputin has been to the Orthodox Church before. On top of that, he knows Kirill, though he didn't mention it. What is he scheming? Definitely something related to the Tsar, whose effigy he was gazing at so intently. I feel as though this is not an accidental meeting. I'll be off. I'm sure you have more urgent matters to attend to. Father.
I'll be here if you want to talk. And remember, darkness does not exist without light. If your demons are real, then so is God who cursed them. <laughs> okay. Definitely up to something, Rasputin. Not, I mean, you know, historically we know that he gets in with the court of uh, the Tsar and is there when the revolution happens, but um, I assume that's kind of what he's in his thoughts at the moment. But just check the time of the video, it's just over an hour, so I think that's probably a good place to leave it for now. When we come back next time, I think we'll head over to Rizitsky Bazaar. Um, seems to be we've got quite a few things to do over there. We'll go to, to, go to the tailor at some point as well, because I'd like to unlock a new costume. And yeah, we'll, we'll carry on. Um, sort of doing stuff around the main quests for now, because as we can see, there's stuff that's kind of getting ready to time out. I think if we pursue the main quest, we might lose some of these. So we'll try and do as much as possible before then. Uh, but yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed this episode. If you have, if you could hit the thumbs up button, that's always very much appreciated. Leave me a comment as well. Let me know what you thought about the episode, what you think about the game in general, the setting, uh, the, the lore, the history. You know, anything you like, really. It's always great to hear your thoughts. And if you're watching this and haven't already subscribed to the channel, it would be amazing if you could. So thanks very much, and I hope to see you next time. Bye for now.